so so you're getting at something and and I Kathleen asked really the the first question I was going to ask, which is there's a difference between what goes on in our heads and how we describe to others, N never mind ourselves, I mean, that's another issue, but how, what we then say to others about why we've come to that conclusion if we've, if we've come to it. But you are each, so my, my uh, s question for both of you is that each of you has in a different way said you want to get a computer system to do something or, Jeff, you've been involved with that either indirectly, and, and Wendelin now is trying to get a computer system to do something. And, and we know that for that to happen, you have to have some mechanism in the system and some representations, and the system has to take something and transform it, I'm trying to be very general, into something else. Now, one might call that transformation reasoning, and whether the reasoning is a simple reaction or it's something one could translate into logic, I, I want to put aside. I, I want to ask you, what, I do want you to say what you think is, would be going on inside. Uh, in particular, Wendelin. I mean, it, if you're not going to call it reasoning, what, what is it that you expect your program to be doing? Okay. Uh, but then I have another question for Wendelin also, which is to tell me, which is to tell me what means. Um. Okay, um, I'll start with the first one and you will you, you pose the second one in in more detailed way, I hope. Um, um, so what do I actually do? Well, um, that's, um, uh, I mean, to, on some level it's very simple, but it's, um, it can get and it will get very complex and that's also something I will have to figure out over the course of this year. Um, the idea is that um, we uh, people are very attuned to face-to-face -face interaction. This is certainly, I and mean, this is one thing we can be reasonably sure of, this is the context where language evolved, where communicative interaction evolved. We um, use these tools in face-to-face -face interaction, which was always a setting um, where people could see each other, where people could see objects in their environment, where they could um, make uh, uh, cognitions about um, the nature of these objects, the affordances these objects had, the causal relationships between objects and between people. And um, so there was a rich information structure available in, in, in these situations. And um, my hypothesis is that a, a lot of this information um, can be used in order to disambiguate the meaning of a communicative act. Um, for instance, um, when you point, you point at something. This something has properties, and these properties um, are something you can draw on in order to disambiguate the pointing signal. So what I'm doing is I'm representing um, the scenery um, in which two agents interact in the computer. And then um, on this representation, which is already a, a, a relatively rich representation, it has a lot of um, useful information, um, you can for instance, do simple search. Um, nothing excludes the possibility of simply using a, 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 a heuristic search algorithm in order to decide between the most plausible candidates of pointing, for instance. Um, so that's how I'm going about it. I want to use more elaborate tools, but the idea is that the richness of the, of the scenery gives you the information to draw on, and this is where you yeah, let so loose various sorry. algorithms. So your system is reasoning by searching through plausible candidates using a lot of contextual information. It, it's searching through context, yes. And yeah, you could so say. I guess I, you seem to be privileging logical deduction as what reasoning means, and I'm <laughs> disputing that. Um, <laughs> we actually, I, I have... A wonderful <laughs> dodge for this. We discussed <laughs> the issue of whether we should um, define reasoning. Jeff was against it. I was for it. 
Um, <laughs> the, the, the thing is, in order to have a pro-contra discussion at all, we have to have a reasonably narrow conception of reasoning. If you say reasoning is information processing, then it would be stupid for me to be against that. That's clear. So yes, I'm, I'm only against, let's say, logical reasoning in a very broad sense, not just uh, first order logic. I would count default logic amongst the, the, these candidates, which I'm arguing against, but certainly not information processing per se. And I know that this is not everybody's conception of reasoning, and I'm not even sure that it's mine. Okay, so then to pick up on the richness of the world and the paucity of what you need to think about, I was doing a pointing gesture and asking you what it meant, and it's, mm -hmm. I'll do it again. Um, I have no idea. I'll pass. Well, no, wait, what? what, what? I, I don't <laughs> think you've made a point here. No, you but you, you, s you have been talking about pointing, yeah. and, and that there's, you, that in fact, I think you said you don't need to know a lot about what the person, what's been said or done before. Mm -hmm. So I don't know how you could tell whether I meant I like the gong, I want the gong, I want you to ring the gong, without knowing something about what I've been oh, thinking about or what my gong. intention. I didn't ah, I was, yes, but even that, you see? Um, so they, I, they, they, this is just to prod you to, to, to be not uh, thinking wrong, about very simple I, I think simple we, we differ already on the, um, on the very first steps of the approach we should take in order to tackle this common problem. I would not start with the most complex cases, because that will always get me back to reasoning. Because but why you, is this a complex case? It seems um, like just the case well, you were describing. Well, just the fact that you're so far uh -huh. away, and I'm not sure where you're pointing at, because of the, the, the largeness of the area. I, like there, there's an overhead projector in between you and the gong. Were you pointing at the projector? I don't know. I would start with simple cases and try to solve them and build a system which is really stupid but at least functional in this limited domain and then take it from there. Because people have tried to start with the complex questions for 30 years and we still do not have systems that can replicate communicative interaction. It's just but a different this take. This does seem to me a simple case. If you put yourself in my position and look at the where the finger is, that mm -hmm. actually the projector isn't between where I'm pointing and the gong. So that's that's, that's a really part hard of the for me to see from here. Uh, but that's my point, Wendelin. You're sitting there, and I'm. It, mm -hmm. Even if I were a farmer sitting in a field with somebody, you know, there's a lot else there. You have to put yourself in my position and think about. Where, where the projection is. I don't think that's, I mean, I think it's complicated in one way, but I don't think it's a complicated case of diexis. Um, it's more complicated than if we just sit across the table with three things in front of us. But how realistic is that? Let, let, let's, I, I think we're both Gracians enough to think that, I mean, a communicative act is comprehensible if it is, um, if you can discover its um, cooperative understructure, like if I can reasonably suppose that you want to be understood, and um, th what you are using here is not an ecologically valid example because there's absolutely no reason for me to assume that you would have anything to do with the gong right now. So the cooperative premise, which Gracian pragmatics is built on is, is missing. That's why neither I nor any system I will ever build is able to disambiguate this signal right now. Okay, but, but then the question is really, what is that background that you would have needed to have in order to do that? And, and, it, and my point is that you need something more than the gesture, and that you're presuming in what you're doing, not simply the physical surround, but something else. Mm -hmm. Certainly, um, our social relationship, certainly um, any sense of what kind of interaction we are having, what kind of goals um, we are already having. Um, certainly, any useful knowledge about you as a person or myself as a person, what kinds of things you 
usually do with gongs, for instance, um, that I happen to know about. And um, the, the, uh, this will get certainly very complex. The thing is, um, all these are kinds of cognition which um, the like, m more, let, let, let's say, more, um, more complex, more higher developed mammals, certainly the great apes, are already capable of. I mean, um, complex uh, action, um, cognition about complex social relationships, um, understanding tools, all of these are things which um, we know apes can do, and certainly other mammals as well. Still, these are not the kinds of agents we usually suspect of having reasoning. And that's where the differentiation is. Like, I do not think that the most um, obvious assumption is that an ape uses logic in order to, to understand what an, an, another ape is currently doing to him. I, I, I guess I'm not, I'm, I, I wouldn't just... I wouldn't dispute this. Somebody else must have a question. I